Um, so my name is Dimala Palanaswamy and I'm the uh, director for MIT Boot Camps. And along with Paula Bello, um, we've put together the MIT Harvard Medical School Healthcare Innovation Boot Camp for the last two years. Um, we're now bringing it to all of you online. Um, Paula, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Ben. Hi, everyone. I'm Paola, Director of Innovation at the Center for Primary Care um, at uh, Harvard Medical School. And as uh, Vimala just mentioned, we've been collaborating together for a couple of years now to run the boot camp um, at the medical school. I run a series of innovation and entrepreneurship um, courses, workshop, um, and a fellowship, all focused um, to support those who are looking to um, create a uh, healthcare venture. And then uh, Vimala, just quickly, since Erin's on this page, mm -hmm. I'll introduce um, Erin Barron. She's not on the call today, but she has been uh, really critical in helping us pull this program together. Um, she's the um, education director and administrative director of the center um, and really uh, just a, a great person overall to help us strategically think um, about the online program. Um, and you'll be, uh, uh, if you take part in the, in the boot camp, you'll get to see her um, run uh, some of the community building work that we'll be doing. Great, thanks, Paula. Um, and uh, I briefly introduced myself earlier. Um, I've been the director and previous to that associate director for MIT boot camps for the last almost four years. Um, I work together with Erdine, who's up here on the screen, who many of you who've taken the MOOCs will know. Um, he and I were actually classmates at MIT Sloan and um, Erdine was the founder of the boot camps and I came on a few years ago to help him really scale both in terms of um, numbers of boot camps and people that we reach as well as industries. Um, and so this partnership with Harvard Medical School has been really critical to that. It's been our um, longest standing uh, joint boot camp that we've done um, and our first real industry specific boot camp um, that we've been we've been able to build off of. Um, so you will be hearing from Erdine and myself during a lot of the innovation workshops. Um, that will be running throughout the week. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll have pretty regular contact with us um, during, during the boot camps as well. Um, and just to give you a sense of what we'll be doing today, uh, we have about an hour together and we're gonna walk through a presentation that'll take about 20 to 30 minutes just to give you a general overview of what the boot camp is. And then we'll leave the last 30 minutes for questions from all of you. And um, as Jane said, if you can put those into the Q&A section, um, that will help her and Mariah to moderate the questions, or if they're one-offs, just answer them directly for you. <clears throat> um, so as you can imagine, the uh, delivering a boot camp like this is a really real team effort. So um, I think Paula can tell us, introduce us to the other team members from the HMS team. Um, so again, this is um, incredibly collaborative. Uh, we have Nancy, who's our innovation program coordinator, Megan um, from the education group, and Caroline, who does marketing and branding. Um, and all of them have, um, in one way or another, collaborated to bring this together. Um, uh, Megan and Nancy um, have also been part of the review committee, so they, they know a lot of your, your faces and your story. Um, uh, Caroline has helped us, obviously, with the marketing side. And, um, and they'll also, uh, Megan will also be helping out with some of the community building as well as Nancy. So hopefully you will get to connect with, um, with, with some of them or all of them throughout, um, throughout the boot camp. And the rest of the boot camps team, so you've met both Mariah and Jane who um, have really run the marketing and admissions. They're, you know, along with the HMS team, the reason, they know you the best and they're the reason why all of you are here today and hopefully with us in a couple of weeks. Um, and then we have Beatrice, uh, Beatrice Carmelino, who's um, an instructional designer. So she's been really instrumental in helping us to figure out how to take what has traditionally been an in-person program and move it online. Um, so you might not see Beatrice a lot, but we'll have regular feedback surveys each week <clears throat> that will be going, that she's designing that will go to her, that will help feed um, feedback into how we improve the course during the course itself and then for future iterations. Um, so again, just to give you an idea of what we're gonna talk about for the next hour, we'll go through what the boot camp objectives are. We'll look at a typical weekly schedule just so you see how um, everything fits together. We'll talk about what those different components are and the expectations for each. <clears throat> um, I'll explain what the innovation modules 
um, that we're going to go through are um, Paula will then talk about the HMS curriculum, so the healthcare spe specific curriculum, as well as the global health track. Um, I'll then talk about the platforms that we're going to use, um, and then team formation. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the other people from MIT and Harvard Medical School that you'll encounter throughout the boot camp, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. So um, the objectives of this boot camp, um, and to, to give you an idea, um, when Erdine and I think about the boot camps as a whole, um, we were both students at the Sloan School um, at MIT and found it to be a very transformational experience. So uh, a combination of the curriculum we were going through, the people who were in the classroom with us, and the projects that we were doing. And so what we've really tried to do with the boot camps is to recreate that um, experience uh, with all three of those elements and take it to a much broader audience. And you know that's something that we align with very strongly with Harvard Medical School. So it's something we've really been able to integrate into the boot camp that we have for you. <clears throat> so step one is really uh, that selection process, which um, Mariah, Jane, Megan, and Nancy have really uh, led and um, which has led all of you to be here. Um, so just to give you an idea, we had, I think, what was it, Mariah? More than 1,400 people start an application. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, we have about 200 people who've been accepted so far. So it is, it, it's really quite a selective um, program and we take a lot of care in making sure um, who's, who's, in our, who's in the cohort because um, the boot camp will continue beyond these 10 weeks, the value that you get, and a lot of that will be from the community that you uh, build within the boot camp and become a part of. So we have about 1,300 boot campers already, um, and we always think that with the selection, we're selecting our future alumni who will help one another um, as the as the community grows. So that's really the first step. We have this, um, you know, this very select group that uh, that meet the criteria, which which you'll all be familiar with now. Um, so after that, we're really looking for you to learn and apply the innovation frameworks that we teach across MIT. So um, <clears throat> a lot of our foundation is within the Sloan School um, and with a lot of the work that Eric Von Hippel and Bill Allett have pioneered. Um, but we also pull in innovation frameworks from um, the engineering school with Sanjay Sharma, who's the vice president for open learning and also um, the founder of the um, Auto ID Lab where the term Internet of Things was coined. Um, with Luis Perez Breva, who talks about uh, innovation and problem spaces and um, really takes, uh, really has a lot of great ideas on uh, ideation, both from the problem space and in the opportunity and solution space. Um, and then um, we'll have uh, it, uh, other, other entrepreneurs and practitioners from across MIT who will be able to share their um, their experiences and, and how, to apply, how they think about innovation from a variety of perspectives. Um, we'll then have the faculty from Harvard Medical School who will be um, teaching us about the, some of the foundations of healthcare in, uh, innovation. And we'll have a mix of both faculty and practitioners and Paola will talk a little bit about that uh, a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, the core of what we'll be doing from an innovation perspective will be around problem discovery and problem solving. <clears throat> so um, we don't expect everyone to come in with a problem or an idea. Um, and even if you do have a problem or idea, we actually ask you to kind of come in with a fresh slate so that you can learn some of these techniques that we'll be teaching you from uh, the beginning to um, ideate around problem spaces, um, use kind of evidence and rigorous um, techniques to identify what is a good problem to solve, um, both from a, is it, is it deeply felt by people? And is it an opportunity for innovation? Is it a financial or commercial opportunity? So we'll, we'll talk about some of the different tools to evaluate these, um, these problems and opportunities along the way. And then we'll talk about how to develop a superior solution. And we'll have exercises. You'll be working on teams together to build a venture around these problems and solutions. And um, we'll, you'll have a series of deliverables and exercises each week with your team to kind of to walk you through that process to get you to that end. Um, 
you'll be on project teams of four to six people. And um, so more than ever, learning to, to collaborate effectively uh, with a diverse global team as well as virtually is becoming more and more important. Um, it's something that we've always focused on in the in-person bootcamp. We're now expanding that to how to collaborate effectively virtually. And so we'll have particular tips and um, best practices for virtual collaboration as well. Um, everybody will have the opportunity to be a C the CEO for at least one module during the bootcamp. Um, and so this means that you will be leading your team in the completion of whatever objectives for that week. So the exercises and deliverables, um, you'll be responsible for managing the team and managing the team to, um, to completion. And while you'll primarily be working with your team on these projects, um, we'll be in a cohort with, um, you know, typically we have people from 30 to 40 different countries represented. Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit later, Mariah, you'll be able to tell us how many countries we have uh, who, where people have applied from so far. But um, currently in our global network, we have over 1,300 people from 100 different countries. Um, you know, within this boot camp itself, there will be somewhere between, um, you know, I think about 50 to 60 people within the cohort of healthcare innovation, plus another 100 or so from innovation leadership. Um, who you'll get to interact with directly, um, and then you'll join this much larger global community. Um, also, so I just want to make the distinction that the boot camp is very much an educational program. We're not an accelerator. Um, we're not an incubator. So again, we're not, you weren't selected based on an idea that you pitched. You were selected based on, you know, who you are and um, how you fit with um, what we think uh, our, our ideal um, innovators. And so it's a lot, it's a combination of what you've accomplished as well as, um, you know, characteristics around uh, collaboration, initiative, follow through, critical thinking. So we look at this as an educational environment and a very safe space for trying new things, um, maybe failing, getting feedback, um, and really pushing yourself to a limit that you might not have seen before or thought possible. So that's where we see, it's kind of on those edges where we see a lot of um, transformation and really interesting things happen both at the individual and team level. Paula, before I move on, do you have anything to add about the boot camp? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, I wanted to, you know, underscore what you were talking about the uh, networking community and um, what I was sharing with the, the boot camp staff before the webinar started. So I, I run a, a health tech fellowship um, at the medical school, which is um, quite competitive. Um, we only allow four fellows per year. And um, we have uh, had various boot campers, uh, previous boot campers apply to the program. And this year, um, we have, uh, which is our first year, we have one one of the four fellows admitted um, is one of the uh, um, uh, uh, was a previous boot camp uh, uh, member, and I, you know, I have to say the um, what you learn to um, in the boot camp in terms of not just the entrepreneurial or innovation frameworks, but the ability to work on a team um, is really shining through. So um, I, I really just want to stress that you know both the community, the network, and what you're learning to and how to how to work as a team and the innovation framework does absolutely take uh, take you beyond um, what this bootcamp experience um, is is like. Thanks, Paula. So uh, I wanted to give you a snapshot of what. So this is a ten week program, and um, there's a a lot happens each week um, in each module. So I wanted to give you a snapshot of one week long module, just so you get a sense of all of the different components and how they interact with one another. Um, so before the start of each module and week, um, so this, this is, a, is an example from week five, um, you'll, in NovoEd, which is the platform that we'll be using, um, you'll have a syllabus that um, releases the different uh, preparatory work ahead of time. And so for each module, there will be several MOOC modules um, for you to take on edX. And those might be anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes worth of um, videos to watch. Some weeks it might be a little bit more. Um, 
And we ask that you, that you watch the modules, um, you know, take the time to understand the concepts. There will be some exercises associated with those within the MOOCs themselves. Um, and, you know, if you want to, you can complete those. They're not necessary for the boot camp. There will be separate exercises and deliverables that you receive um, during the boot camp that you'll work with your team on. Um, each week we might have some readings as well to help you prepare for the, um, the work ahead, um, but they'll be quite short. Again, um, no more than half an hour worth of reading each week. Um, we'll also release what those exercises are for the upcoming week um, for you to work with on your team. So that'll happen, that'll happen the weekend before the module starts. Um, that weekend, typically on the Sunday night, whatever the previous module, those deliverables will be due. Um, and again, those are all team-based, so you'll coordinate with your team. Um, it's the CEO for that week who's responsible for turning them in, um, although all the team members will contribute to those deliverables. Then um, during the week, most of the um, time, the live time with us will be between Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so this is, uh, not every week we'll have the exact same breakdown of um, the green and the yellow. So the green are the innovation workshops, um, which primarily Erdine and myself will lead. Um, the yellow will be innovation leadership lectures, which will be from different MIT faculty or practitioners. Um, but typically those will happen on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 10 and 1130 um, Eastern time in the US. And then on Wednesdays, we'll have the, um, the lectures from the HMS faculty. And so those will be from 10 to 11 in the morning, um, Wednesday mornings, um, Eastern time. And then for those of you who are doing the global track, which Paola will talk a little bit more about later, um, those will be later in the day. Uh, it looks like I cut off the time when I, when we share this, I'll have the timings um, for everyone to see. But um, those will happen from about noon to 1.30 um, on Wednesdays. Um, and then at the end of the week, which most of the instruction will end on Thursdays for the week, we'll send out that weekly feedback survey. Um, it'll be a quick five minute survey, just so we understand um, the, uh, how you're doing and what we can do to improve for the following weeks. Um, on top of this, uh, you'll see at the top that there will be a coaching session attached. So the coaching sessions will be with a coach. Um, all of our coaches are um, experienced MIT entrepreneurs. So they've, uh, most of them have done either a PhD or an MBA at MIT and have gone on to start their own business. Um, and they've seen some success with their business. Some of them are also entrepreneurs. So they're working at bigger corporations um, doing internal innovation. Um, and all of our coaches for the healthcare bootcamp all have uh, healthcare specific um, experience. And so um, you'll have the coaching sessions with your coach as a team. And then you'll also be meeting with your team um, to work on your projects as well. And so the the things that we ask that are mandatory that you be there live are your coaching session with your coach and um, the, uh, the team meetings that you have with your team. A lot of the other work that you can do will be flexible and on your own, um, or a lot of the sessions that we have that you can see up here will be recorded. Um, it's generally better for the live sessions that are recorded if you're able to attend live but there might be a week here or there where you're not able to, so you'll need to watch the, watch the video recording afterwards. So those will be available as well. Paula, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I will, I'll get into a little bit more of the, the global health track um, when I get to that. Great. Um, and so this is just kind of a breakdown of what each of those components are um, and what the weekly time commitment is and um, whether you can do it on your own or whether it really needs to be live. Um, and so you can see, and we'll, we'll share this presentation with you afterwards so that you can get a sense, but it's, um, you know, the, the weekly commitment that we see is somewhere between 10 and 15 hours per week. Um, I would say about three of those hours are really mandatory that you do those live, um, but you also have input into that scheduling with your coach and with your team. 
um, everything else is either flexible or um, we have uh, a recording available if you're not able to attend something live. Um, and so these are the, the innovation modules that, we, that we'll be building on each week. Um, so the first two weeks will really be focused on entrepreneurial creativity. So this is where you'll start to look at different problem spaces and opportunity spaces and to start, um, you know, ideating in these areas and we'll go through different ideation techniques to kind of broaden what that space looks like um, before you start to converge on the problem that you'll actually choose to, to solve together as a team. And part of that process of the converging on a problem um, will be through customer discovery. And so we'll talk about different techniques for customer discovery, the primary one being around um, primary market research where you actually go out and talk to um, potential customers and other stakeholders to really understand uh, the problem from their experience, how they're feeling it, um, so that you can really uh, base your understanding in the problem from their, from their perspective, so that when you go to solve the problem, you're really solving, um, solving the problem from the, the point of view of the person who's feeling it the most. Um, <clears throat> so then uh, the, the customer discovery is meant to help converge on that problem. Um, will the week five will really focus on um, defining that problem um, because we find that clearly defining the problem is very necessary to take it to the next level and then actually solve for that problem. Um, if you haven't correctly defined the problem, um, you might actually be solving for something for something else. Um, so I think what you'll see is also, uh, we actually don't even start talking about solutions until the sixth week of the program. So for the first five weeks of the pro program, we're very much focused on really understanding the problem and getting all of that right so that you can then go on to um, build a superior solution that really brings the value that the customers are looking for um, in the most effective way. Um, and then once that uh, solution has been articulated, we'll start to talk about venture design, which goes into the business model you'll be using, how you're going to actually, actually distribute the solution um, and build out a financial model around that to make sure you're financially sustainable in some way. And then the last two weeks, we'll focus on storytelling and pitching. So um, a lot of, uh, you'll, you'll be pitching to a panel of judges who are used to um, evaluating early stage businesses and early stage ideas. And the point of this pitch will be for them to be able to give you feedback to really improve as you go forward, to really help you tighten the business logic and take this and understand what you would need to do to take this idea forward. Um, so when we focus on storytelling and pitching, it's not just pitching for investment, because especially in the earlier stages, even before you talk to investors, there are a lot of other people that you have to get on board with your idea and your problem before you even start talking to investors. So co-founders, um, your first employees, um, potential customers and suppliers. So, this will really be a focus on how do you tell your story in a really compelling and persuasive way that also conveys the business logic that you've developed um, over the course of the 10 weeks. So let me hand it over to Paola now to talk about the HMS curriculum. Great, thanks Imola. Um, so, you know, no matter what country you reside in, um, I think we can all agree that healthcare entrepreneurship is quite unique. Um, it's a lot harder, I think, than most industries, and part of the reason is because um, uh, depending on where you're at, your, your consumer, the one that's using your product or your service, isn't often the one that's paying for the service. Um, I know that does change in, in some countries, but I think what, um, what is the same, though, is that you do need to gain a deeper understanding of different stakeholders in healthcare, and you do have to approach um, the way you go about, um, you know, prototyping and your business model in a different way than most industries. Um, so what, you know, what we've tried to do from, from the medical school side is really bring in the perspectives from some world-class um, Harvard faculty, some serial entrepreneurs, um, uh, some investors to give you a perspective of what it means to be successful in starting um, a healthcare company. Um, and to be honest about those perspectives, especially from the entrepreneur, entrepreneur side, 
Um, and so here's just a sampling of some of the, the speakers. Um, we have Zach Malchano, who's a serial entrepreneur and, in, and incredibly well-versed in, in how, do you, um, how do you find the right problem to work with? How do you identify a clinical need? Um, we have uh, you know, two faculty members here, Dr. Ziri Song and Dr. Ativ Mararatra, who um, have um, deep experience in both healthcare policy um, and sort of understanding what levers you need to push to really make um, a difference with your, um, with your innovation, um, as well as um, in consumerism in healthcare. Um, and then um, we, Ida on the bottom right is an example of an entrepreneur that, um, that you'll be hearing from. Um, and she's, she's sort of in her early stage of entrepreneurship, but gives a very honest story of what it's been like to, um, uh, to try and, and innovate within healthcare. Um, some other things that we'll also cover within the five weeks is um, intellectual property basics. Um, and then also how similar to what Ben was saying about, um, you know, telling your story, you'll also hear, you know, how can you convince people to back, um, to back your idea. So again, we, we've tried to balance, um, balance everything out with um, a bit of some, uh, you know, faculty perspective, investor perspective, and entrepreneurial perspective um, as well. And yes, and then the global health track. So um, we also recognized, um, you know, after our, our second boot camp, that there was a, a large appetite for understanding um, understanding entrepreneurship from a global health perspective. And what I mean by that is either you yourself might be launching something in an emerging market, or you're looking to learn how to scale um, your venture globally. Um, either now or at some point, hopefully in the near future. So what we've done is we've decided to add um, another uh, another track in addition to um, uh, the the boot camp track, which um, uh, which we've been talking about. So this one is optional. It takes place um, on Wednesdays every, and I think we've tried to space it out so it's all, so it's just about every other Wednesday, and it's only about an hour and a half. So there's no other work that's required of you if you decide to sign up for the global health track. Um, there, um, there isn't teamwork, but it is very highly interactive. Um, we have capped the number of people that can join the global health, health track for this reason. We wanna make sure that, um, that they're interactive lectures um, and that you'll be able to uh, get to know the speakers that we're bringing in um, and, and really get some of your questions um, answered. Um, and so here I've sort of listed, listed out some of the key questions that we hope to address within the, the five, um, the five months, the five lectures that we have throughout the 10 weeks. Um, some of them are sort of what are the key opportunities in global health and how have they been addressed. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, technologies um, and which are the most promising. Um, and then also, uh, you know, examples of successful business models and how um, business model adaptations, especially during COVID-19 pandemic, which I think will be incredibly interesting to hear how different countries have been, um, you know, ad addressing the pandemic um, and have reacted in um, sort of the, the entrepreneurial side. Um, and so again, I think it's just a wonderful opportunity for you to meet um, folks from uh, the entrepreneurial world, the nonprofit world, the government sector. Um, and I, I believe it's most fitting for those that might just have an interest in global health, but also for those who, again, are trying to launch within an emerging market um, or hope to uh, scale their innovation globally. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's uh, another option for you to join, which I'm sure we'll send out some more information if you haven't seen it already. So thanks, Ben. So just to give you a sense, we'll be using several different platforms um, during the course of the boot camp. So Zoom, which we're all on now, um, which will be where all of the um, innovation workshops, the faculty lectures, any social activities, which we do have some planned throughout the course of the 10 weeks, um, the coaching sessions and your team meetings will happen. Um, then NovoEd, which I mentioned earlier, is the uh, course management system. So if any, if any of you have taken the other online classes, you might have used NovoEd or Canvas or Blackboard. These are some of the um, Moodle. These are some of the popular ones that are out there. Um, this is where all the course materials will sit. So the syllabus will be there. The schedule, the most up-to-date schedule will be there. 
um, the deliverables and exercises, which I talked about, um, that's where you'll go to download those and work with them on your team. Once you complete them, you'll then upload them back to um, NovoEd. Your coaches will then go through um, the deliverables that you hand in and give you feedback via the platform. Also, all of the, um, all of the different sessions, the live sessions that we do, those will all be recorded and they will go into NovoEd so that you can go and watch them later if you want to. Um, and we'll also have all of the presentation decks available there. Um, and again, the, the recorded um, sessions and the presentation decks will go up uh, within about 24 hours of the live session. So you'll have access to all of those. Um, we'll be doing a lot of our um, communication, so announcements, um, coach to team communications, et cetera, via Slack. Um, so I, I think Jane will be holding some type of tech, uh, kind of um, tech office hours towards the beginning of the boot camp, so that um, she can walk you through how to use Zoom and NovoEd, and if you're not familiar with how to use Slack, how to use Slack. But that's how we'll be sending out a lot of our announcements and quick, quick communications. Um, I think with both Slack and NovoEd, you can also opt to have some of those notifications sent to you via email as well. And then um, I referenced some of the online courses that you'll be taking modules of um, to prep for each week. So these will all be on edX. Um, within NovoEd and in the syllabus, there will be links directly to the modules that you'll need to take, but those are sitting on um, the different edX platform. So um, those are the four platforms that we'll really be using to deliver um, the course. But um, Jane, do you have anything to add about uh, the, the platforms? Hi, thank you. Um, I think that we'll probably be sending out um, within the coming weeks, we know we have our payment deadline coming up in a week. Um, shortly after that, anyone who is attending will receive a general onboarding of all those platforms and uh, with instructions on how to navigate those. And then if anyone still have any issues, we'll, we will be doing an open office hours uh, slightly before that. Um, we're also going to be opening up those channels uh, a couple days before the boot camp itself because we want you guys to have some opportunities to get to know one another cohort wide. Um, the day that we start the boot camp, we're hitting the ground running with uh, courseware and workshops. So we'll we'll be kind of organizing a couple of um, hours and, um, and, and uh, also in, in Zoom for you to get to know one another and, and talk with your teams. Um, I think also giving you guys some onboarding for team coordination, um, scheduling with one another and, and how to operate, um, and, you know, in the digital space. So uh, I, after the payment deadline, a lot of that will be coming through. Okay. Thanks, Jane. Yeah. Um, and then team formation. So this is something I know we get a ton of questions around, and I, I know it's probably something all of you are wondering. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the boot camp is really project and team team based over the course of the ten weeks, um, and we'll be placing everyone on teams of four to six, um, and we we do assign those teams, and we're essentially looking to maximize diversity per each team, and the way we think about diversity is where you're coming from, um, where you know, gender, age your education, your work experience, and the industry that you're coming from. Um, for example, we want people who, um, we want each team to have people with a mix of skill sets. So people with business skill sets, people with um, direct healthcare, you know, clinical experience, um, creatives, engineers, data scientists. We wanna really maximize and round out uh, the skill set that each team has. Um, so that's, that's one of the biggest criteria that we're looking at. Um, and we'll, the first thing that we'll actually look at when we're putting you onto Teams is the, the working time zones that you submit. So for all of you who are being onboarded, you'll get a survey, who, who um, uh, are coming to the boot camp, you'll get a survey that asks you about the time zones that you're available to meet with your team and to meet with your coach. And so that will be the first criteria um, that we look at just so, you know, people are all doing their synchronous work at times that are, is convenient for them. Um, and then we'll start to, to place those groups based on um, diversity. And um, previously, we actually used to let people choose their teams. And now what we've done is um, we've, we've, we assign those teams because, and we work the, some of the 
uh, curriculum that we work on is how to work effectively across diverse teams and across different communication styles because um, it's true that once you're an entrepreneur, you know, theoretically you do get to choose your team, um, but you don't get to choose your customers, you don't get to choose your suppliers, you don't, um, you know, there are, there are a lot of other um, people that you will interact with that you don't get to choose who they are and you have to figure out how to work with them effectively. So we start some of that um, right, right now. And then um, with understanding your own communication and working style, this will help you when you are building out your own team. Um, and so you've, you've gotten a sense of um, who, who we are as a team, both the, um, you know, the MIT Bootcamps team and the HMS team. So you'll be seeing all of us throughout the whole bootcamp. Um, and then you'll be interacting with, in the lectures, um, the HMS faculty and MIT faculty and practitioners as well. Um, we'll have, uh, you know, some, some of those um, speaking slots will be by practitioners from, from both places. And um, in addition to our teams, the people that you'll be interacting with the most are the coaches who are all experienced innovators within the healthcare space themselves. Um, so for the coaches, there'll be a dedicated coach for each team working with you um, over the course of the 10 weeks. And then um, you also, uh, some of the coaches will also be hosting office hours over the course of the 10 weeks. So um, you, you might have the opportunity to interact with some of those other coaches as well over the course of the 10 weeks. Then I'll just add, sorry, I forgot yeah. to add earlier. Um, so one, one point on the practitioners too. So through the Center for Primary Care, we have um, you know, a huge network of um, you know, primary care physicians, uh, nurses, care providers. Um, and during your market research, um, we will, if you reach out to us and there are you know, uh, folks that might be able to help you um, in terms of interviewing them or getting feedback on your idea, um, we'll have a list of folks that you could, um, you know, could email and reach out to or, or have a phone conversation with um, during that phase of the program during, I think, believe it's week three and four. Mm -hmm. um, so just a, a, a note in terms of, um, of the, some of the other practitioners you might be able to interact with aside from the lecture, um, the online lectures. Yeah, great. Um, okay, so that's all of the formal presentation. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Jane. Great. And thank, thank you, you everybody. all for, for coming and looking forward to meeting many of you in a few short weeks, yeah. and getting to know you better. Bye, everyone. Okay.